when I make a junk journal, when I make embellishments, I love that challenge of making things that don't cost a lot. Although I also love getting new papers, new tools to play with, I like to make things at the right price. So today I'm going to share my own cost saving and money saving tips and ideas and I'll do that while I'm making this journal card. I've got the tips written down for you, these are in Pinterest, so let's just crack on and make some. So I'm going to make one of these and although I have used a digital, you don't need to, I'll give you suggestions of what to do instead. Just something really simple but fun and maybe quite eclectic. And I'm also going to talk through these tips. So I've put down, well actually I've put more than 10 tips on here. And to help I've grouped them into making your own supplies and then things to do with using those basic supplies and right at the end the bonus tips, adopting the right mindset. These will be in Pinterest, you can download them. I add tip sheets or process sheets to my Pinterest board every week. So starting with making your own supplies, let's just have a little chat about that in the context of making a journal card. And I like to start right from the beginning and make the backing myself. I have used index cards in the past, but I've really been enjoying starting from the beginning. And I've bought a whole wedge of papers here in a 250 piece pack, so cheaper because I bought in bulk. And I went, let's say I upgraded a bit to 160 GSM, and this is acid free, and it's from Hobbycraft. I like it because it's just about the right thickness if you wanted to put it through a printer. It's quite smooth, so it's really nice to stamp on if you want to. And then what I've done with each of these little cards, is I've added some extra papers on top and that gives me some extra thickness and interest. So some of these tips about making your own supplies, you could start with really what is paper? I'm not going to say that's card. And then add the extra handmade elements on top that bring it to the thickness of card. So let me show you a couple of examples of things you may have seen on my channel quite a bit. So one of the surfaces that you can see here, and I've left quite a lot of surface visible when I've done the collage, that was intentional, comes from, oh, lovely, lovely stack of hand dyed papers. And I couldn't be more happy than when I look at a pile like this. So a few weeks ago, I shared a process for making these. So if you look on the back, a lot lighter, Make your own hand dyed papers using whatever supplies you have. So I made these with a mixture of acrylic paint and some PVA glue that I mixed up and made a bubbly type mixture that retained its consistency when it sat on top of the paper. I added a bit of mica and white paint. Couldn't find my gesso that day. And I've got something absolutely beautiful so I've created something from some of my basic supplies. I've done it on book pages here, all sorts of different book pages. So I've got different effects, thinner pages, thicker pages. I've got rich, deep colour on some of them, but I've also done it with just basic, really, really cheap exercise notebook paper. And just look at the effects on here. So first tips about supplies is about making your own. One of the most beautiful and much used supplies that I have on my desk here is Amazon packaging paper. Let's have a gratuitous crunch. Oh yes, we like that. So I've added, having scrunched it up and made these undulations and creases, lots of different sorts of gold and green paint on here. I've done it with blue paint as well, and I just smooshed over the top. I've splattered a bit. Love that really rich gold there. And then this gets used for backing paper, and it adds such a beautiful effect. I think on this one, I've also 
sprayed it with mica and my lesson from making these background papers is to just add a little drop of PVA glue to the consistency with mica to make it stick. So those are a few tips about the papers. Let's talk about how to save money when it comes to the images. So definitely make use of books. Let's talk about this little baby that I've used a few times. So it's called A Concise Guide in Colour to Herbs and each page has got a beautiful image on it. And I've used these, torn them up, torn them out and put them onto some of my really cheap and easy embellishments. But the images are quite big so when you're choosing a book think about the size of the images and I also go for books where there's lots and lots of green in the images. So let me show you an alternative one that I think is really great if you wanted to make some sort of journal card like this. So I have a book of trees. I don't think this is as readily available but I, I love the green in it. I think I found this in a charity shop and I absolutely love it. In fact I've hoarded this. I haven't used it yet. I might use it this autumn. I think that would work really well on some of our embellishments. This Reader's Digest book a field guide to the wild flowers of Britain is stunningly beautiful. Really, really useful if you want to use the images and make a pocket. So look at the shape of that. That folds over beautifully and you get the images showing. So that's something to think about when you're trying to source images, maybe not by a digital, is think about the shape of the page. And then the one that I think many of us have seen is this one. A field guide in colour to wildflowers and it's so economical. Let me show you the pages. So the size of the images is brilliant. You can tear around these really easily. So let's just tear a page out. The paper itself is thick enough. So you could just by hand go round and get an image which would fit wonderfully on a pocket, on a journal page. I've destroyed one there by being so quick, but you'll let me off, I know you will. It's just So I've got something there. I like to go by tearing. I just like the raggedy edge. You could cut them out. And from one book, which I know this has been available in the UK on eBay, you can get all of these little wonderful images. So if you don't want to, can't, don't have access to digital, so that's not what you want to do and you want to go back to source, definitely think about using different books and have a look to see if you can find any of those. And any suggestions you have for books that would work or your favourites, just share them in the comment box down below. So one of the most important ways of saving money that I have found is also to cut out the cost of somebody cutting these down to size for you. So for each of these I have done the cutting and when I cut I use one of or sometimes both of my Fiskars paper trimmers and guillotines. If you wanted to maybe save a bit of money and not do what I've done which is buy umpteen different ones and then end up just using two of these two, I've wasted my money and basically bought ones that weren't very good, that I couldn't get a replacement blade for, that didn't have the inches and centimetres on, that didn't have the markings for the cuttings. Save money by cutting down the papers yourself, but to do that you'll want a tool. So this lifts up here. There's actually a metal line here, a little very, very, very fine thread that shows you where you're going to trim. And of course, because it's big enough, you can cut quite large pieces of paper, so you can create your own little cards from larger pieces. The other trimmer slash guillotine that I use is this one. It's quite small. I'll show you that lifts up there. Very sharp blade. And it's good for several pieces of paper at once and will cut through thicker card. And I use this one to prevent myself from making the blade on the trimmer itself blunt too fast. Then I save a bit from not having to replace that as quickly. So make your own base, 
cover it with handmade papers, use any sort of papers that you want to, to colour and dye, even ones that have been written on. If you do have access to digitals or that's something you just want to include in your projects, then I wanted to share a couple of tips about these. So this sheet here is from Rockwell Designs and the reason I really like this kind of layout is you get so many little thumbnails in one piece and it's also therefore really, really economical in time to put a ruler down and tear up but also think about how many images you're getting per page of paper and for all that rather expensive ink. It's quick to tear down, it's economical when you're tearing because you're just ripping between and you'll notice that before I started I filled the whole of my paper. Now this is set up for US style paper, so US size. It meant that I had no white borders on my sheet but the left hand side is cut off a bit and I just don't know how to convert it to UK size. But I'm not worried because what I do is I fill the sheet, tear them up and where I've got a little bit of a smaller thumbnail here, I've just compensated with some extra decorative paper on the left or maybe covered up the edge with some washi. So I get innovative, I get creative and I work with what I've got and I just get really excited about that challenge of making things work. The other suggestions I have if you do have an inclination for using digitals is to incorporate labels into your projects, which I know many of you will do. So again, to be efficient, and because I love them, I use Tracy Fox's random sciency labels a lot. And I like this design because there's not a lot in, on here, which isn't easy to cut out. I'll be honest, I don't do much about cutting out the circles, but I really like the squares and the rectangles and those with the cut off corners because I can cut those out really quickly and look how many you get to a page. You may also be able to find thumbnails like this. So this is from the Jessica Rapp collaboration with Tracy Fox and I just really like the ease of cutting out these little rectangles. I think they're beautiful. I use those over and over again and my other suggestion is that you be quite discerning but choose a couple of very very vintage looking pages because they get used time and time again as well in different ways. So I used this particular page recently, Let's see if I've got it, I used it to be the subject of a basically a waxing cover, I made a wax cover, I got my iron out, I splattered with bits of gold paint and then I sewed around it and because of the text that's on it, it lends itself to lots and lots of different projects but still has that very strong vintage message. So there are lots of other um, designs and you'll find many of them in Etsy. So this is Antonio Makes, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. But this sort of collection of papers, something vintage, some little thumbnails, and some labels for me are a core collection of elements that really help when I'm decorating some of my embellishments on my junk journals. And if you want to save money and not just keep buying lots and lots and lots, think about maybe what your curated collection of digitals might be if that's what you want to spend any money on at all. So I've got one of those little pieces of paper and I've covered it, just glued on a piece of my hand dyed paper. If I don't have a piece large enough, I've also been using scraps. So I might have had two or three of those pieces on here. It doesn't matter if you're using the scraps. And I've also got some little scraps left over from tearing pages down. I've been making some washi bound notebooks. So to this, I'm going to add a focal point. I've torn up one of those digital sheets. Like I say, you could use a picture from a book. That's really nice, isn't it? I think I should probably illustrate the point about one of these images being not full size. So let's try and find one that's a bit short 
on one side. There we go. That's I've got a rose here with a bit cut off. So this is going to be my image and I'll have it on the left hand side. But to start with, I want to give it a bit of a mat behind to make this be much more clearly the point of attention on the page. So I'm going to take a piece of my packaging paper. Just a small piece, wet fingers, and I know I want that to go behind and I want the rough edge to be on the left. I don't want to see this straight edge and that's possibly a bit heavy. I'm going to take it down. And I don't want to do too much thinking. That's good already. And I also want to give that rose a little bit more emphasis. So I think what I will do is put a different colour behind. I'm just going to pick something green to give it some emphasis. Not worried about what's on it. Yeah, that will do. A little bit of collage paper. So I'm going to put that on first just to make the green in the image have some dominance, some focus and then this is going to go on my collage paper and I know I'm going to lose seeing a little bit of that lovely bubbly effect behind but I won't lose all of it. There we go so we've already built it out and now this is going to go on my card and I have just a little bit of not method but a little bit of an approach and I just flex it to the supplies and the design and the images that I'm seeing that can go on there. I'm not going to stick down this right hand corner, bottom right hand corner yet. I want to have something over here. So I'll have a look at my little scraps. I don't want to compete, but I want similar colour tone. And one of the tips I've got on the sheet is really make your designs look high end by trying maybe to limit yourself to about three colours in your colour palette. So I wouldn't, for example, go for purples or uh, blues in this. I would stay away from those. That can go under there. This is literally an offcut from another piece of paper. And I'm going to add something extra just at the top here to build it out. I could go back to a bit of my packaging paper if I want to. Just something along the top. And we're going to help this feel like a bit of a frame by adding something up here. I could use paper. I might use some washi tape. Let's just bring in some of our supplies. Now I tend to split my washi tape into two and that's not cost saving. That is so that I get a lovely tatty edge. So I'll have a bit of that up here just along the edge and then I'm going to just take away some of the straight line here maybe use a bit more of the same washi I really like this crosshatch works very well as a vintage design go over there so we've broken it down maybe add a bit along the bottom just really really tiny pieces tend to work I'm going over junctions it's a bit much but I like it I can go there and I think I want something just to cover up some of the edge here. Now I haven't worked with any pink, so I could maybe add a bit of that. So at this stage, what you could do is add a label and that would be really, really nice. Or I'm going to add an image and paint it. So archival ink, this is a very affordable stamp and there are many others on Stationery Pal. So if you take a look at Stationery Pal, I tend to think of Stationery Pal as washi tape, but they do do stamps and you might find a discount code in my description box below. I will add that. And so quickly and easily, I just take a little bit of paint and this, I think, adds that personal touch and just a little bit of luxury. And it's so satisfying. There's certain shades of green as well. If you've got a vintage design, I like to add the more 
greeny reds rather than the bluey greens because I feel that they just look a bit more vintage. Maybe we need just a little bit of texture on the front of that image. I'm going to take the tiniest amount. These are running out, these ink pads. I'm just going to get a tiny bit on top. Layering, I think, adds an awful lot. And it also is a great way of testing your memory about what supplies you've got so you make use of them and you delve into your shelves. Oh, I like that. So the crosshatch on that acrylic stamp I think goes really well with the crosshatch in the washi. When it comes to finishing off an embellishment I often like to use a sewing machine. So you can see on these I've gone around with a sewing uh, running stitch here and then I've just added a little bit of zigzag. It's very quick and easy to do. The sewing machine that I have I didn't spend a lot on so I bought a Hobbycraft sewing machine. I do have a video on my channel if you want to see a little bit more detail about it. I spent £40. I think they're full price about 55 now in the UK and they're easy to get at on Amazon. If you want to find one that does the equivalent and has just the basic stitches that you might want and the point is you don't need a really expensive machine to add a huge amount of value in your projects and have a lot of fun in your junk journaling. So I do make use of the running stitch and the zigzag on all sorts of things like tags. I even went round the waxed cover that I made over the wax. It went through it and it was absolutely fine. So if you want to invest a little bit to get a lot out of it, my game changer suggestion is a sewing machine. I still think then you can create beautiful things and save money in the long run. But another suggestion is that you look for children's supplies. So these are my little Brian paint sticks. I bought a set of about 20. These are just the, the very well used colours. And I like to use these to go round the border of a journal card like this. In fact, a while ago I made some faux vintage postcards and I used my little paint sticks. They're Little Brian and you can find these on Amazon as well and you can either dip them into water and go around the border very easily. It adds a little bit of a shimmer. This one's got metallic in it so you can do that or you can just daub on with a colour and do it with a different one. You can daub on with a colour Obviously that's a lot stronger and then you can dip your finger into the water and smudge it out. But my point here is that sometimes you find more cost effective, you find some money saving solutions if you look in different departments. So these I think are meant to be children's supplies. Some supplies for adding colour, for painting, for pencils, they can be quite expensive can't they? So if we can find different ways of sourcing them that still do the same thing and give us all that satisfaction, then why not? And you can end up with something that is absolutely gorgeous. And if you are feeling that urge to spend and you're just getting caught up because there's a new product and you just have to have it, then take a moment to step back from your laptop and maybe sit on your hands. Use your great creative muscle, your brain, to solve the problem of how to make something without buying something. You get better at solving that problem and doing new things without spending money if you just have a go and have a play. I hope to see you soon.